Okay, Carl. Within this, how you doing, man? Oh, yay. Ricola. Are, are you coughing? No, but you know what? I'm going to wait because I don't want to be... Fast. Three? Good. It's a pleasure to talk to you on this occasion, of course. Thank um, you. I had no idea what to expect. I mean, and it's, uh, and I'm just wondering if it's all possible because you, of course, have like gone through the whole filming and everything else with this film, um, to sort of remember, uh, like the uh, first looking at this script and going. Uh, I mean, our reaction, of course, is, is what you've heard. It's mm -hmm. we had no clue. Mm -hmm. um, uh, did you have a similar reaction to the portrayal of Marie? It was very. Uh, Sophia's scripts were pretty sparse, so. It was more about the pictures in the front of the script and her talking about it with me that really made me understand what kind of film she wanted to make. And that film to me was a whole universe that I'd never explored and very frightening to play the lead, to play Marie Antoinette, but to not play a queen in a sense and to really try to play her as a human being and not get caught up in expectations of a, of a historical film. Um, she she says that she didn't want to do a big historical epic, um, and what I say is that she did um, an intimate historical epic. Right. <laughs> um, I always say a history of feelings rather than a history of facts. That's my line. Um, and yet, I mean, I think that because I heard that as well. Um, it's it, it's not that that's misleading, but I think that it only tells half the story, and that they really did. She really did try to stay true to reality. Well, it was telling their story, you know. I think that um, they're in this this kind of pretty prison, and she, she's this childlike queen. She doesn't really know what's going on. She's a teenager, and she's trying to find her identity in this place that that everyone's watching every move she makes, and she's not procuring, you know, she's not feeling her duty of what she's was sent there, which is basically to have an heir to the throne. So. None of this is kind of working out for her, and you know, and there's all this pressure, and I think that she, you can just, for Sai, you can get lost in that whole world and not really know what is going, go, what's going on, on the outside. Um, as if you hadn't heard enough superficial, silly questions today, I have to ask about the, just the clothes in general. Um, were they a pain in the ass? Yeah, <laughs> for me, they. You know what they. Have, they help you, they're the fabric of your character, you know, you, and it is, it's true, you get dressed up, and some days it was a little like, oh, I can't put this dress on, it's like this pink thing, I feel like a pastry puff, and I don't like it, but, but then other days I dressed in, you know, my black dresses, and I really felt, you know, beautiful in them, it, it, you know, it's always different every article of clothing evokes something different inside of you so it's interesting and says a lot about Milena's you know her talent um Sophia I mean I think it's clearly evolved I mean it's only been three films but uh, did you notice any differences I noticed that this is a pretty brave period film and um, I don't think she would have done this right out of the gates, you know, she really uh, has proven herself with her first two films, and with that success, gave her more, um, I think, leeway to do whatever she wanted. But she's always done what she wanted. I think this is just probably the the bravest one. Bless your heart. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much.